Hillary Clinton, on the issue of Syria in the debate last night, reiterated her position that she's now shared with us maybe a dozen times about how she wants to do a no-fly zone and safe zones. Now, there are very real serious problems with that uh, and issues that can arise as a result of that, unintended consequences, blowback. Um, and finally, finally, Chris Wallace, the moderator for last night's debate, although he did a terrible job in many respects, on this issue he did a decent job because he's going to take what she says about, hey, I want a no-fly zone and a safe zone. And he's finally going to ask the most logical question ever in response to it, and let's see how Hillary Clinton handles it. Secretary Clinton, you have talked about, and in the last debate and again today, that you would impose a no-fly zone to try to protect the people of Aleppo and to stop the killing there. President Obama has refused to do that because he fears it's going to draw us closer or deeper into the conflict. And General Joseph Dunford, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, says, you impose a no-fly zone, chances are you're going to get into a war, his words, with Syria and, and Russia. So the question I have is, if you impose a no-fly zone, first of all, how do you respond to their concerns? Secondly, if you impose a no-fly zone and a Russian plane violates that, does President Clinton shoot that plane down? Well, Chris, first of all, I think a no-fly zone could save lives and could hasten the end of the conflict. I am well aware of the really legitimate concerns that you have expressed from both the president and the general. Uh, this would not be done just on the first day. This would take a lot of negotiation. It would also take making it clear to the Russians and the Syrians that our purpose here was to provide safe zones on the ground. We've had millions of people leave Syria, and those millions of people uh, inside Syria who've been dislocated. So I think we could strike a deal and make it very clear uh, to the Russians and the Syrians that this was something that we believed was in the best interests of the people on the ground in Syria. It would help us with our fight against ISIS. Notice she didn't answer the question. She was asked uh, very plainly, hey, you know, this um, maybe would escalate to war with Syria and Russia, which is one of the reasons President Obama's like, yeah, not going to do it. Uh, so would you shoot down a Russian plane if it happens to go into your no-fly zone? Uh, you know, Chris, there are many legitimate concerns about this uh, policy that I have. Whoa, 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 you didn't answer the question. So what's the answer to the question? I mean, it's a no-fly zone, the whole point of it. No, yeah, no, no fly! Look, a Russian plane is flying in our no-fly zone. You're going to shoot down the Russian plane? Then we're in World War III. No, but see, pe like people really don't understand. Yet again, this is another issue where Hillary Clinton makes it really, really difficult for progressives who supported Bernie Sanders to throw their support behind her. Because this is, this is honestly Republican 101. This is neocon 101. So we intervened in Libya, made the situation worse. We did the war in Iraq, made the situation worse. And what does Hillary Clinton want to do? Let's intervene now in Syria. We're already intervening, by the way. But she wants to intervene further in Syria. So in other words, you didn't learn dick from Libya. You didn't learn dick from Iraq. As, by the way, you go around apologizing for voting for the Iraq war because now it was such an obvious mistake that you can't hide it. That's the political reality. But now you think, oh no, totally. If we go and we intervene in Syria, it'll work. Well, the other interventions didn't work, so what the fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? So they just still continue to buy into this this hawkish interventionist framework. And you're, you're drinking the neocon Republican Kool-Aid here. And so when, when you talk about a no-fly zone, also, why are they doing it? Like, why, why are they even considering it? They'll say, and she'll say, Oh, I care so much about the civilians in Syria, bro. That's why I want to do it, bro. That's what they'll say. Do they actually give a shit about the, uh, the civilians in Syria? We are arming Saudi Arabia to the tune of billions of dollars, helping them, refueling their jets, giving them coordinates for the bombings, and sitting by as they massacre civilians in Yemen on purpose. They're bombing schools, they're bombing hospitals, they're bombing open-air markets, they're bombing food factories. They're bombing everything! Fucking everything! There's an- uh, we're on the verge of outright famine in Yemen, and there's a Saudi blockade and we're standing by. Yeah, people are starving to death. They're bombing civilians on purpose with U.S. bombs. There's pictures on social media of the American writing on the, the, the remnants of the bombs. So we're sitting by as our buddies are massacring civilians and we don't give a fuck! 
So you care about civilians, you could easily stop the dead civilians in Yemen, just stop arming Saudi Arabia and sanction them immediately, and boom, you save civilian lives in Yemen. But the thing is, you don't care about civilian deaths. So why am I supposed to believe that you care about it in Syria? You don't care about it in Yemen, when to fix it is so much easier, cut off uh, weapons, sanction. But you don't do it. So now I'm supposed to believe you care- Oh, we're, we're such humanitarians. We're just so altruistic. We're the world police, really. So we care about the civilians there. Oh, do you care about m the fact that Mali is fucking al qaeda right now? How about civilians over there? No, we don't care about that. Oh, how about uh, what's happening in South Sudan? A lot of civilian death there, but I don't care about that. How about the Congo? Is there, there's a problem there. I don't care about that. Well, the Syria is the only one all Syrian civilians. Syria, you know, we care so much about the Syrian civilians. Nobody else but the Syrian civilians. Or, you don't care about the Syrian civilians, and what's this all really about? It's really about the geopolitical chessboard. Syria is aligned with Iran and Russia. Iran and Russia are your enemies in your geopolitical imperialist chessboard game. So you want regime change in Syria to get rid of the hostile actor Assad to put in your own puppet government, and you're fine with turning Syria into Saudi Arabia in the fucking process. Because we know, we know the nature of the rebels at this point. Many of them ISIS, many of them al-Nusra, which was the former al-Qaeda affiliate, but they're still jihadists. Many of them Islamists. So, spare me your nonsense. If you put a no-fly zone in, it is true. Maybe you'll protect some civilians, but you'll also be acting as the air force for ISIS and al-Qaeda. Because those are a lot of the Syrian rebels. And the whole point of the no-fly zone is, who are you going to attack? Who's, who are flying the planes? Again, it's not ISIS. So it's the Syrian government, and it's Russia. So you are doing it to say, I will shoot down Syrian planes and Russian planes. That's fucking nuts. And final point is this. Again, she's like, oh, it's about the civilians. Oh my god, we gotta care about the civilians in Syria. Really? Then why is it that in 2013, in a speech you gave to a bank, when talking about the issue of Syria, you said, a no-fly zone is actually a terrible idea, because a no-fly zone kills massive numbers of civilians. Why? Because you have to take out, you have to secure certain areas, take out uh, certain key areas where uh, the planes are, and it happens to be the case that a lot of Syrian civilians live in the areas that you have to take out. So you said it. I didn't say it. You said it in 2013 in a speech when you thought nobody was listening, nobody in the public, WikiLeaks had to release this, and you said, yeah, it's a terrible idea to have a no-fly zone because you're going to kill massive numbers of civilians. But now your argument is, well, we have to do a no-fly zone because I care about civilians. By the way, she made those comments about the no-fly zone in defense of Obama pulling away from doing more intervention in Syria. So she was defending him at the time, like, yeah, no-fly zone is a bad idea. But she admitted, kills a lot of civilians. Today? Oh no, doesn't- what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I'm doing it to save civilians, I don't know what you mean. This doesn't unnecessary es unnecessarily escalate with Syria and Russia, potentially to World War III. You need to ask yourself this question. Are you willing to send young American men and women from fucking West Virginia, from fucking South Dakota, from California, are you willing to send these people to go fight and die in Syria in World War III against Russia to take Aleppo? Is that what you want to do? Now, I obviously feel horrible for all the civilians on all sides that are dying. But am I going to do a direct U.S. intervention when history proves that direct U.S. intervention has been a disaster across the board and made it worse almost every time? Please.